Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some breaking news in the world of chess as Stockfish 15.1, currently the strongest chess computer in the world as of December 9th, 2022, has crossed a playing strength of 4,000. Now, a couple of things about this. When you get to those higher bounds of ELO, nobody really knows exactly how that's quantified. <laughs> um, computers just sort of get assigned these arbitrary ELOs of 3,700, 3,800, and it could be in even different formats, like Fisher Random Chess, for example, which is what we will be covering in this video. And in the Fisher Random Games that you're about to watch, it seems like the computers had some sort of mutual agreement. There would be a no-castling clause, so it was Fisher Random and no-castling chess. Obviously, we will run this experiment again in all likelihood with castling, but as long as they're playing on an even playing field, I got no issue with it. Stockfish defeated some of the best Fisher Random computers in the world by score lines of 28-1, 90-2, so 40-0 with 60 draws. And in this video, I'm going to show you four games that Stockfish played uh, where it just absolutely obliterated the opposition. Now, you may notice that the back row of pieces is shuffled. You remember the Fisher Random World Championship? Back row of pieces is shuffled. There's 960 of these. Rules still apply. Castling kingside would be this way. Castling queenside would be to your other rook. You just have to free up the squares. Folks, in this video, you are going to see four of just galactic level brain chess. I hope you're ready, because I'm ready to show you some of these games. C4 in the first game, Stockfish rated 4,023 at Fisher Random, playing a 3,600 level computer, which it defeated 90 to two. So we have an English, <laughs> an English, if you will. Stockfish plays E3 and Black immediately attacks in the center of the board with the move D5. This is relatively normal in Fisher Random to bring out a queen uh, and you can immediately put some pressure on the opposing position. Uh, we have knight g3 played by Stockfish. And now a very interesting move. Not the traditional move knight f3, which just brings out a piece, but rather f3. And the point of f3 is to fight for equity in the center of the board. You'll notice that chess.com Stockfish actually doesn't like this move. Uh, Stockfish 15.1 running on the best servers in the world definitely does. e5, a4. All right, bishop c4, bishop b5 are on the way. Very interesting that white does this. That's a very clear indication white has no plans of castling queenside whatsoever. But also, how is white ever going to go this way? Maybe it doesn't matter, because stockfish 15 is so good, it doesn't even need to castle. You bring out the bishop, the queen is sent packing, and now knight 1, e2. Very, very quick development. Very nice job negating the opponent's piece play as well. And you'll notice that already with two pawns on dark squares, the light squares are looking nice and juicy here for Stockfish 15 to exploit. Knight d5, and once again, galactic level brain play, a5. Just a4, a5, middle of the game. In this position, a4 is the top computer move. Shockingly, Stockfish giving Stockfish a medal. And now a5, restricting the queen side over here and making it impossible to put anything on the b6 square. In the future, if white needs to attack and soften up the king over here, that's what, black, that's what white will do. But the b6 square is also just, you know, nice to take away. So knight back to c7. Now Stockfish builds behind its, adva its advancement and plays the move queen b3, simultaneously putting pressure on that and that, and also preparing to castle. One thing that's kind of been slept on here is that four pieces out of the five necessary have left. And let me tell you something right now, when that knight indicates that it would like to attack this, it's suddenly all five. Houdini now takes this pawn on g2, rendering castling not a possibility anymore for Stockfish 15. And Stockfish 15 says, I never wanted to castle anyway, stupid. I wanted to transfer my pieces over here and launch some sort of attack on the soft pawn near the king on b8. Black plays the move bishop to h5 that attacks the pawn on f3. And white plays e4, just chucking the pawn completely. That is now two pawns eligible to be captured. And Stockfish just doesn't care at all. Because as the top engines in the world play nowadays in 2022, they understand that material balance doesn't really mean a whole lot. Uh, two pawn advantage is more than enough uh, to launch a violent counterattack, especially if the either uh, if the if the either if the other side um, is not prepared, you know, for uh, for battle. So uh, in this position, we have f takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop going back to g6, and now we have a6, b6. And here the intergalactic levels of play begin. Rook to a5. Rook to a5. Um, so if you just look at that move, queen takes d2 is a thing. Queen takes d2. Um, 
you can't take because you're pinned. Stockfish doesn't care. It plays rook takes c5. Giving up the rook completely, but the idea is bishop takes c5, and the point is that black is entombed. Like, black is in some serious trouble because black is not going to be able to get the king out of the center, and Stockfish is like, I don't even need to rush. Whoop! Rook d1. Just a calm little rook d1, looking for rook d6, looking for rook d7, looking for a capture on b6. Black tries to create a little bit of counterplay here with queen takes e4, oh, where he's hit rook d3. I mean, think about it, look at Black's position, just completely tied down a Tetris piece, a sad Tetris piece in the corner of the board as Stockfish plays knight g3, looking to just trade, just trade the knights. Why? Because Black has no peace movement. Stockfish, even in no castling chest 960, absolutely murders the opposition. We have knight takes d6 instead, giving up the queen. I got news for you, it's never gonna get better. Here comes the queen, and I'm threatening mate, and you're gonna have to chuck a knight. You take the pawn, you lose a knight, it's game over. And a few moves later in this position, rook d8. Rook f7 is a fascinating move. The equivalent of being put out of your own misery, rook f7, rook d6. And Houdini was defeated 90 games out of 100. It won two, and they made six draws. 90 to two. 90 to two. Now, I told you I've got some other games for you. We got Fat Fritz uh, in SF. I don't exactly know what that means. That means Fat Fritz in San Francisco. Hopefully not. Its car is going to get broken into Fat Fritz and Stockfish. And this is some sort of, like, smaller version of... Whatever monster Stockfish 15.1 is. Also kind of insulting they're talking about, they're calling it fat. Like, really? Seriously? Have some respect, okay? Have some respect. It was stressed, COVID, put on a little weight, maybe lost its job. Is this the first thing you really look at? Seriously? Despicable. Anyway, I wanted to show you how Stockfish 15 also plays with the black pieces. Um, you'll notice that the queen does in fact come out. You notice last game the queen came out. A4, there's a lot of these obscure pawn moves. Uh, just trying to get, and, and obscure moves just period, just trying to get pieces into the game in non-traditional ways. Uh, Stockfish plays E6, Fat Fritz plays H4, playing A4 and H4. Look at this. Th th this is really, this is chess beyond your, my understanding. They don't even understand what's going on. G takes H4 is a full loss of a pawn, but Fat Fritz wanted to take control of the center. It thinks that the doubled isolated H pawns really aren't a benefit to black. It also thinks that they could be a weakness. And Stockfish 15 is like, okay, so take it. And now Knight H6. And you gave me that square. You played H4 and F4. So I'm going to immediately park either there or on the F5 square. White plays G3 activating the bishop. And Stockfish plays queen out of the center of the board, completely undeveloping, looking to get that way, and looking to do this. Knight e3. Rook out to a6. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I, I told you this, this video was going to have galactic-level brain plays. d5, a solid pawn center. Bishop is not going to come down to b7. Rook to b6, looking for an exchange, and for the specific reason, to open up the rook. It's a very nice trade here. Horrible structure. I mean, abominable pawn structure. Like, awful. Gross. Stupid pawn structure here for Stockfish 15. And yet, the activity of the rook, the fork is coming, the queen might activate to b4, and that's looking nice and pretty. Knight b5, queen b4, active move, b2, a4, all under pressure here. And Fat Fritz offers a queen trade. Stockfish is like, I'm good, I got queen d2. You don't have queen d6 because of my knight. Now, if you thought that was the end of it, it's not. Bishop takes b5, trading the queens, and now I'm going to look to win this endgame. Stockfish 15 did something genius in every single game of this video. So in, in this particular game, it sees the second pawn. But Fat Fritz was very quick with the counterplay and looked to attack the weaknesses, right? Kicking these pieces out of the way. Black is looking for play with a3. Stockfish 15 goes knight d8 and uh, loses a pawn. So it's now 5-4. The endgame is likely a draw because at the end of the day, you have the opposite colored bishops. So if knights get traded, rooks get traded, enough pawns get traded, this structure doesn't scare anybody three on one and then the weak e-pawn probably offsets itself. But in this position, Stockfish 15 finds one of the most heinous endgames I... I'll repeat myself. In this position, Stockfish 15 finds one of the most heinous endgame ideas I've ever seen. 
I've ever seen, and this is why it made it to 4,000 ELO. It starts to trade pawns, which is stupid, because the more pawns it trades, it's in an endgame, right? So it's obviously going to be a draw. Then it allows white to get this strong anchor. What on earth is Stockfish doing? Stupid, like, hello? Night A, see, like, where are you going? You're gonna lose that pawn too. Where, why are you pushing? To where? Your pawns can't go anywhere. Okay, you take d4, take a4. I mean, this pawn is obviously gonna die, right? The knight's just gonna come back. Bishop b3, okay, the knight should return. All right, the knight doesn't return. Now we have d4, fine, rookie a check. And in this position, obviously, Fat Fritz was like, nice, I made the draw. I mean, there's absolutely nothing here, except there is something here. What Fat Fritz had not realized is, when all of the maximum moves of the position are played, which is this. Black is winning. Why? Because white has no moves. The king cannot cross to the center. The knight is completely stuck. The bishop can only move between b5 and e8, which is the equivalent of taking a shuttle that takes you to the airport in a loop. It's basically taking a shuttle around the airport terminals, not getting on a flight, and not going back home to your family, okay? You just stuck in the airport loop. There is nothing you can do here with white. You can also play f8, that just loses a pawn. What the heck? Stockfish freezes the computer, rotates around. By the way, if you are wondering why this pawn did not get taken, knight d7, bishop b3, it's because it would have been, the knight is trapped. This is nuts, completely nuts. And ultimately, that's what happens. Because bishop f8, the timely move. Knight cannot come out. The knight dies, and I got news for you. This is still almost a draw. But black finds a way to win the pawn, guard its only remaining pawn on a dark square. And that's the end of the game. Because black goes here, the b4 pawn survives, that means the c pawn falls, and this is a winning end game, because what you do is you dance, and you dance, and when you dance, and when you dance, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to push that pawn finally. You're gonna be able to push that pawn. There is absolutely no defense here. The pawn is escorted to the end of the board by the king, the knight, and the bishop. And you go knight a3, and you go b1 queen, and you're gonna, and by, by the way, you might, you might ask why this was not played, because Stockfish knows how to mate with bishop and a knight. You might not. That's not even an insult, like it's a very hard checkmate, but Stockfish does. And instead of that, white just goes out with a bang and gets mated, and um, good lord. The trapping of the knight on the edge of the board. Even in endgames, this computer is a machine. This computer is a machine. Now, Stockfish 15 versus Berserk! 3800 level at Fisher Random. We have an early queen sortie, and what is going on here? Queen is busted into the castle. Knight g3, f4, aggressive. Knight coming out to f2. Now, position is still kind of balanced, as it always is in the early going. c3, queen comes out looking for a queen trade. Stockfish is like, I'm good. Knight c5. And now is the beginning of, sure, of, of pure genius, because despite having a slightly better position from the early stage of this game, Stockfish 15, instead of doing anything special, plays the move. Knight a6. Giving up a full knight to strand the black king in the center and to trap the rook. Not only can you trap the rook, you can make a move that does nothing because black cannot even stop the rook from being trapped. Knight to a6, and this idiot is going to live here for a bit. Literally, it just does. Rook f1, defending against knight f3. Bishop b2. Like, I'm telling, like, the knight is just, it's just standing there. This is completely ludicrous. d6, queen h6, allowing the queen to be jailed. But the queen goes full Rorschach, and suddenly, e5. Oh my goodness, what is happening? That is a square covered four times. You can take, but now I'm activating my pieces. And I'm activating the bishop over here, hitting the rook. The knight comes back to defend, and now, remember this guy, by the way? Like, has, it, has anybody forgotten about this idiot? That, that knight finally takes the bishop. Like, the knight finally is like, <laughs> this is what I wanted all along anyway, to destabilize your position. You take, and now I'm picking up the knight, and in this game, Stockfish just put its horse in front of Berserk. And that was that. That was, that was literally that. Now white is just playing cleanup. White is just up material and um, plays bishop d7, gives up the rook, doesn't want to take it, rook f5, and 
it's, it's, it's always fun to see how disrespectfully Stockfish will win a game of chess. And in this game, it just sort of simplified and played b3 and won another piece and brought in the queen. And I love how the king has an option here to like go here or here. No, just place king d1 because there's no checks. Knight b6, a b5, bishop takes. It just butchers everything and gives up the rook in the corner. You know why it gives up the rook in the corner? Because it's, it's a cool engine that doesn't need material. Queen f6 check. You can take the knight. I will mate you like this. Or I will mate you like this. C6, queen c6. And queen b7. Checkmate. Once again, in this third game that I would like to show you, the move knight a6 occurred. And the knight just lived through danger for the entire game. And if you thought an endgame piece of genius was good, you thought that first game was good, you thought game three was good, what you are about to see in the fourth game of this video is heinous. This is the best computer it played. Stockfish played against a 3900 rated Komodo Dragon. Komodo is one of the best engines in the world, and at Fisher Random in particular, it is very, very good. So, H4. How do you like them apples? And G4, we saw this a lot from the best players in the world, bringing out their queens and their rooks. I'm talking human players, not engine players. Um, D6, G5, attacking the integrity of that structure. White plays the move C3, looking for an exchange over here, potentially end of the queens. And definitely what uh, was going on here is, I think Komodo was somehow like, if we make Stockfish trade queens, it has no chance. Like, it can't beat us the way it beats everybody else. It's a totally equal position. All right? The rook is pass. I mean, the rook is active. This rook is passive. The bishop is active. Structure is symmetrical. We got it. We figured out its weakness. Now, here we go. Um, bishop d5 is a very provocative move. Trying to force black to go here. And then basically just say, well, you've blocked your own development. Now, Stockfish will not uh, succumb to such pressuring and instead plays bishop to e6 and a trade occurs. So now these pawns are softened up. The king will probably walk up to d7 and life will be good. d3, bishop g7, knight d2, knight c7. Pieces are dancing. Now a fascinating move. Any human being here on the planet plays king d7 or off the planet. I don't know, somewhere on another planet plays king d7. Why? Because knight f4 is not scary because that can be defended by moving the bishop. Why in a million years did black go king e8? Why did Stockfish do that? I mean, is Stockfish really going to put the king on f7? And if it is, why? Wouldn't you much rather have a rook there on the open file? I don't understand chess. That's why I'm watching Stockfish play the moves, right? King c2 b5 okay knight e4 played by white applying some pressure making it impossible to play a move like d5 because knight c5 knight e4 makes sense and now the journey concludes on f7 why f7 why not d7 i don't understand not to mention this is on the way like you are going to get slapped in the face here and sent packing but maybe Stockfish is thinking, well, while white is distracted and likely to chase my king around, they will be tying their shoes together and putting themselves in a compromised situation while I hammer down their queenside. Maybe the king is just not so safe here. We don't know. We honestly have no idea, okay? Maybe there was something that the computer didn't like. It didn't like that this was potentially going to be weak in some positions. So bishop 2e3. Knight b5. I mean, if you look at the last, like, moves, except for the king moves, everything the black has done makes sense. b5. All right, b4. Knight b5. Like, you don't have to be that good to realize, oh, black is putting some pressure on the queen side. That makes sense. But now what about this? Not only that, what about this? Well, as it turns out, Stockfish knew all of that was going to happen. In this position... Stockfish plays king to d7 anyway. And you say, Levy, what the? You just told me, you just went on this whole thing. How did we end up here? Because this distraction was a waste of time. All of this was a waste of time. In fact, baiting white into coming down that side of the board and softening up this side of the board, making it completely weak for my assault was the plan. Stockfish has seen this is not that scary. 
I have baited my opponent into coming at me on the queen side. Uh, king side. Even though my king's on the other side, in the middle. Rook h7 is very scary. Knight g6 is on the way. Knight f6 is on the way. You would think that that's the plan, but now I've got knight a3 check. King to d1. And now you think, well, obviously, rook b1, right? No. Not rook b1, because then I play defense. And somehow your pieces just get stuck. So instead of that, the absolutely ridiculous knight to b1. Knight b1 has a very clear idea. The idea is to probably take on c3. How does white break through here? Maybe king c2 can kick the knight out. Maybe knight f6. It's a very tense position here, building up on stockfish. What would happen here is maybe this, and then this, and then knight c3, and then maybe I go knight a4 or knight a2. I mean, this is just one of the hypothetical variations that might happen. Okay, crazy, crazy line. Now, instead of that after knight b1, uh... Komodo is like, I'm going to play defense. I actually, I'm, I'm not so convinced here. And I'm actually going to be okay uh, giving up my bishop if necessary. Now black moves out of the way. Black's like, you can't ever take me anymore. Knight f6 still looks like a possibility. Rook b2 is on the way. One of the two computers is going to perish as we watch the kind of final scene here of the Transformers go to battle. White plays king c1. As you can see here, king c1 is kind of keeping the balance. Like, um... There's an idea that Stockfish finds after some thought. It's completely ridiculous. King, like, seeing why King C1 is a mistake, it it's going to completely bl blow your mind. So, take, take, okay? Now, here are the idea for Black that wins, which the Komodo Dragon computer had overlooked, was Rook B2 check. King to C1. All right? Rook B8. Threatening... Some sort of mate. Something. There's something there. Right? Or maybe not. What does Komodo not see that Stockfish sees from a distance? This. Check. King d2. And the absolutely absurd Bishop to d4. What that does is moves the bishop one square. It looks like a mouse slip. Looks like you meant to take the pawn. And it weaves a mating net. The bishop can be taken. But after this, the king, in some crazy turn of events, cannot be defended by anything. The basket is weaved. The king cannot go forward. Rook b2 is checkmate. Game over. You can give me checks. You can hunt my king across the board. You can sacrifice all your pieces. You will never mate me. And going all the way back here, this was the one auxiliary winning idea that the Komodo dragon never saw coming. Knight d2, rook b2, and now rook b1 check, and the seal of the tomb. Kiss of death from Stockfish. We have d knight takes c5, sacrificing a knight. Now we take on d4, but mate is unstoppable. It sacrifices a rook. And Stockfish has a sense of humor. It doesn't even take the rook. It goes here because it's super disrespectful. The rook is sacrificed again. <laughs> now Stockfish is like, all right, I got to take it. Rook f6, and it doesn't matter. The, the, the most insane thing about this, like, it doesn't make any difference. You can go here. You can go here. I will go here. You sacrifice. You give me all the checks in the world. And finally, you've stopped mate. You had to sacrifice the whole army to stop checkmate. Isn't that nuts? You had to find a way for this knight to give a check and survive and then go here. And the only way to do that was to sacrifice all of your pieces and do this and this. And out of spite, Komodo doesn't resign. It plays on. Stockfish picks up some pawns. It's going to pick up another one. It's going to probably... Look at this, knight d6. It's not even taking because rook b2 is a faster ladder mate. Rook b2, knight e8, rook b8. And that's game. Stockfish beat some of the best computers in the world with some of the most lopsided scores in the world imaginable, and apparently has a rating in Fisher Random Chess, and soon in regular chess too, probably, of something like 4,000. Disgusting. Ridiculous. And it's amazing that it's creativity and brilliance and sheer, like, just, just a galactic level brain uh, translates to Fisher Random and maybe other variants. We should get some of these computers to play duck chess or something. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Get out of here.